nothing can hinder. Nurturing every learner, together we soar, make dreams score. Amidst the challenges we face, a journey of learning wins the race. Education for all, let's rise, not fall. This is Dead Ed Science Ed TV, a video lesson of Wanjimakar Egg National High School, School Division of Pangasinan 2. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us another day to study and prepare for a good life in the future. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic, which caused a lot of changes in our lives. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our teachers who are doing their best to inspire and guide us, especially in these trying times. Bless our country and the people who continue fighting to stop the pandemic. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us good memory so that we might understand and remember what we are going to study now. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, dear students. Welcome to Saya TV. This is Teacher Jello, your virtual science teacher. Be excited as we learn a new knowledge in the wonderful world of science. In today's video lesson, we will learn the physical changes of matter in terms of the arrangement and motion of atoms and molecules. This video lesson will help you understand the significance of describing physical changes in terms of the structure and motion of atoms and molecules. Let's begin our third quarter by learning about our most essential learning competencies, which you should master by the end of this week. In our previous lesson, you have learned the three states of matter and its physical properties. In this lesson, you will learn the different common changes of matter and its different processes. Alright, let's begin our lesson by filling in the boxes. Number 1. What type of change is observed in the image? You're right, it is melting. Number 2. What type of change is observed in the image? You're right, it is boiling. What type of change is observed in the image number 3? You're right, it is evaporation. And for number 4, what type of change is observed in the image? Correct, it is condensation. Let's move on to our lesson. Have you ever wondered why ice turns into puddles of water in a sweltering day? Keep watching and you find out. We know that materials on Earth reside in three states of matter. They are solid, liquid, and gas. When the state of material changes, it will change one of these three states. In addition, the property will also change. Our scientists, especially our chemists, classify changes as either physical changes or chemical changes. They also learn a lot about the nature of matter by studying the changes, how it shifts. They also even learn how to tell the different distinction between the two types. Physical change is a type of change which involves change in size, phase, and appearance of matter without changing its chemical composition. What happens when matter changes state? Solid, liquid, and gases can be changed from its different state. Common changes in state include melting, freezing, condensation, vaporization, sublimation, and deposition. All matter is made of tiny particles that are in constant motion. During a change of state, the motion of the particles changes. When a material condition changes, the properties change as well. This is unsurprising. However, once the state change is reversed, the substance goes back to its original properties neatly. Let us learn about the common changes of state and how they process. Do you know the difference between evaporation and boiling? 
Boiling takes place when the liquid particles gains enough energy to overcome the forces holding them together and move apart to form a gas. Evaporation is a physical process that changes a liquid into a gas. It only occurs when an exposed surface of a liquid absorbs enough energy to pull away from the liquid and turn into a gas. Both are when substance transform from liquid into a gas. Think of a boiling pond of water and all of the water bubbles. The water level decrease because of all the particles have enough energy to convert into gaseous state. But water standing in a pond that is not being heated by anything other than the environment can also turn into a gas. This is evaporation. Only the particles at the surface have enough energy to change from a liquid to a gas. Hence, evaporation is a slower process than boiling, even though it achieves the same state. Both are types of vaporization. The opposite of these vaporization processes is condensation. Condensation is the transition from a gas to a liquid. For example, think of a cold can of soda on a hot day. You will notice a water droplets created on the outside. We also have dew on the grass every morning or a steam up mirror after a hot bath. Even the clouds in the sky or a foggy windscreen in a car, these are all examples of condensation. Condensation takes place when the gas particles loses energy and move close together to reform the liquid structure. Water vapor in the air has cooled down to form liquid droplets of water. Do you know about the transitions between solids to liquids? You're right! They are melting and freezing. Think of the Arctic sea ice. In the summer when air temperatures are warmer, more heat energy is absorbed by the ice. This causes bonds to break between the ice water molecules and the ice starts to melt. The solid ice becomes liquid water. But in the winter, the air temperatures are colder. And so, sea water freezes and the ice starts to form again. Let's talk about the changes between liquids and solids. As I mentioned, physical change are those that do not include the breaking or formation of bonds. They have the same types of compounds or elements that existed at the start of the transition until the end. Melting takes place when the particles in a solid absorbs enough energy to overcome the forces holding them in fixed position and rearrange themselves to form a liquid. While in freezing, it takes place when the liquid particles loses energy to rearrange themselves to form back the solid structure. For example, when an ice cube melts, it takes on a new shape as it absorbs the ability to flow. Its composition, on the other hand, remains unchanged. When we put the melted ice cube back in the fridge, it returns to a solid state because of the temperature. Again, the composition remains the same. Sublimation only occurs when the particles of a solid absorb enough energy to completely overcome the force of attraction between them. The most common example of a solid that undergoes sublimation is a dry ice. But did you know that sometimes gases can turn straight into solid when cold? This is called deposition. Deposition is the process in which gas change directly to a solid without going to the liquid state. But why is heat is so important in this? Let's find out. When a material is heated, it absorbs heat energy. This additional energy can cause attractive forces between molecules to break. This lead to rearrangement of the particles because the attractive forces no longer hold them together as tightly. Let's check how much you remember about the changes of state. You can pause the video and fill in the blanks. Did you remember them all? Very good! These three states of matter can be interconvertible by changing the condition of temperature and pressure. When the temperature or pressure increases, the interaction between molecules also increases. Similarly, when the temperature decreases, molecules and atoms find it easier to form a more 
rigid structure. We have come to the end of this learning episode. I hope you learned a lot from this video lesson. Thank you for staying with me. I am Teacher Jello, and together, let's learn science fun and easy. See you in our next learning episode. Be safe and stay at home. Bye!